Hi, I'm Leslie Rogowski here for Art Beads, and today I'm going to teach you how to do raw, right angle weave. That's flat right angle weave. I brought some examples to show you what the pieces will look like when the stitch is done. Then I have a diagram where I'm going to do my doodle beads thing and draw it out for you so you see exactly how the needle and thread go. And then I'm going to take actual beads and help you to learn by stitching it up right in front of you. So, ready? Let's go. Welcome to flat right angle weave or raw. This is a very methodical stitch and if you pay attention, you'll definitely understand how to do it. It works great with many different kinds of beads or crystals. So I have samples here where a strip of um, flat right angle weave has changed direction in these little zigzags and I've used crystals. In this bracelet here, uh, a row of flat right angle weave is embellished and you can see the round beads and they sit in this very precise kind of nine o'clock, three o'clock, noon and six on if you picture a clock face. That's why it's called right angle weave because the beads sit at right angles to each other. The last example I brought also has two, it actually has two pieces of flat right angle weave that are stitched together on the side. So it's almost like a faux cubic right angle weave, but you can do it with flat angle weave, flat right angle weave um, pieces. So why don't we go to the diagram and I'm gonna show you how to do the stitch pattern and then I'll take you into the beads. The thing to remember with flat right angle weave or right angle weave in general is that you always want to move in a circular motion. You're always moving clockwise and counterclockwise in a full circle with your beads. So we're gonna start with bead number one and go one, two, three, four, always, always, always complete a circle. So I wanna keep going back through bead one. Now in order to progress up my strip, I have to continue around the circle in the same direction. Did you see how I strung one, two, three, and four, and then pass back through beads, one, two, and three, and exited out the side. Now I'm gonna pick up three beads because another characteristic of right angle weave is that the units of four beads share a bead with the next unit. So you're actually only picking up three new beads even though this second unit has four beads because it includes this bead three. So I'm going to pick up beads five, six, and seven complete the circuit and exit out the top, which was bead six, and now I'm ready. Did you see how I went in the opposite direction? You're gonna pick up three beads all the way around, complete the circuit to come out for your next unit. Now I'm going around in the opposite direction, all the way around, complete the circuit, exit out the top. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. We're ready to turn and come down. Now I wanna make a point here of saying that when you do any seed bead stitch, but especially something where the beads are directional, like in right angle weave, you should always pull your beading thread straight out the bead hole, straight out, not in an angle, not off to the side. So your bead holes are always gonna sit, in this case, like this, at right angles to each other. But any bead stitch you do, you wanna always pull that bead thread straight out. So here we are in position in the second diagram where we've come up and we're ready to start and build down another row. So these beads are all used already. I'm gonna draw them in for you so you know. We're coming up here, exiting what was the 17th bead. Now we're gonna pick up three beads for the top, which is the turnaround. And we're gonna pick up those three beads and come all the way around through. Now here's where you're going to attach. You have those turnaround beads. Now we're gonna continue the row. In this case, the next unit actually shares two beads with the first row that you did. So in this case, you're gonna share bead 16, which is here, and the bead you just added, 22. So you gonna pass back through 22 and through bead 16, pick up just two, 23 and 24, and come down all the way around and exit out here. Now again, this unit with these four beads is going to share 
the last bead that you just exited and a bead from the first column. So you're gonna pick up two beads and go all the way around and you're gonna come down through that existing bead, pick up two, all the way around and exit out, only pick up two again, all the way around, through, shared beads, all the way around. Now, did you see how I exited off to the side? Now you, to do the turnaround, you're going to need to pick up three beads at the bottom in order to start. And now of course you're just gonna start picking up two again and you're gonna have the shared beads. And there's flat right angle weave. Let's look at how flat right angle weave is done with actual beads. I'm starting with four beads and I'm gonna tie them into a ring for my first unit. And that's a, that's a term that a lot of people use for um, different aspects of beadwork, but especially in right angle weave, they refer to this as a unit. If you move into cubic right angle weave, they're called cells. Okay, let's put this down. Now I have my little ring and I'm going to build my little strip up this way and I've worked in two colors here because I want to make it really clear how the beads sit. So you're going to get your beads at say like east and west or three o'clock and um, nine o'clock in gray and six o'clock and noon are going to be in black. So I want to make sure that I'm coming up, finishing going around the circle and I'll put this down again for you to see. So there's my first unit and I'm coming out the black bead. Now I'm going to pick up three beads and go around clockwise and I'm going to pick up a silver and a black and a silver and I'm going to pass through that top black bead and form my second unit. And let me pull this tight for you so you can see how you have the black beads lined up. So this is two units. Let me try to move my hands away. It's still a little wiggly because I haven't moved these. I haven't pulled the thread tight. So let me do, to add the third one, I wanna continue around the circle. Remember in the diagram I kept saying, make sure you complete your circle, make sure you complete your circle. So. I'm moving around to come out that top bead all the way around and get ready to add the next unit. And I'm gonna pick up the side bead and the next top bead and the side bead. Now I'm going around counterclockwise. As long as you keep moving in a circle, you're doing it right. Now remember, I have to come out that black top bead, so I'm gonna continue around that circle, up through the bead that's kind of at three o'clock, and around, continuing in the counterclockwise. Now I'm gonna be doing my next unit moving clockwise, and I'm gonna pick up three more beads, the gray, the black and the gray, and I'm gonna come around this way. The unit is sharing that black bead from the previous unit, and I'm gonna finish my circle and then I'm gonna, I wanna put the beadwork down and show you how this looks. All right. Here we go. Should probably get a good look at this now where you can see that there's one, two, three, four units. Each unit is made of two gray on either side and a black at the top and bottom. So it's right at, at right angles to each other. And I went around each unit, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. Now let's turn the corner so I can show you how you add three beads to make the turn and then just two beads to make another row. So the strip is gonna grow this way. So I'm coming out the side bead. I'm gonna keep moving in the same direction, which in this case is clockwise. Now I'm gonna pick up three beads and I want it to be a black, a gray, and a black. 
and I'm going counterclockwise here. Now, do you see how that's the top unit for the next row? But here's the tricky part. You're only going to pick up two beads now because, let's see if I can show you this. If you look at this when it's stitched together, the black bead and the gray bead right in there are the top and the left hand side of the next unit. So you want to pass through those beads before you pick up your new beads. So you have two beads sewn already. Now you're going to pick up a black bead and a gray bead, which is the bottom and the other side. And you're going to complete that circle going around the two beads you just strung are attaching now to the two beads that you strung before. So you can see how this is. Let me straighten these out. The top units attaching down. So you have two of the four units that are going there. Now I'm going to finish this off and put it down again real fast for you so you can see how the whole thing looks. You want to make sure that you complete that circle. You're going to pass through in the same direction. That bottom bead of the unit you just added, remember you're just picking up two now. I'm going to pick up a gray and a black, or color A and color B. And we're working in a counterclockwise motion. You're going to continue through around that circle. And then at the bottom, you're going to add those last beads to finish your row. One, two. Now I haven't done the turnaround to start up the next row yet, so I want you to just see how this looks. And although it's a little wiggly, you can see that the black beads all go like this and the gray beads all go like this. That means that the bead holes on the gray beads are up and down and the black beads side by side. So you can see how the gray beads are all lined up parallel and the black beads are all lined up parallel. And that's the basic of flat right angle weave. It is a little challenging, but I promise you with practice, you'll get it.